What up, guys? You know what it is? It's your boy, John Mike, down here at Gospel Producers. We're doing a studio tour today with my guy, Larry Wilson, producer extraordinary, Lawrence Flowers, Dorinda Clark Cole, uh, man, uh, Todd Tribbett, uh, Jesus Christ, probably. <laughs> It's, it's all for Jesus. It's all for Jesus. So for Jesus. this dude is a monster, man. And so we want to just kind of take some time and uh, showcase the studio. I walked in here and I was just kind of blown away because this is all in his crib. And so uh, we're going to just kind of go through uh, and um, go through some of the stuff that he's got, some of the gear stuff, man. So you got everything. Well, I've got you need to do. do what I've you got need. everything I need to do what I do. Um, so, uh, the organ's here. This yeah, is a, the organ. This is a this is a nineteen, uh, it's nineteen sixty nine, Hammond B three, um, with I have two, uh, one twenty two Leslie. This is the short Ooh. one. This is the this, and I have two for a reason, ladies okay. and gentlemen. So, now how do you even how how do you even get two Leslies connected to one organ? Let's start well, there. Okay, so it it starts with the the there's a the Leslie's are actually powered by the organ. So yeah. the Leslie's are not, you don't plug a, a traditional Leslie speaker in. Right. You, they actually are powered off of the organ. So the, the organ uh, preamp has uh, enough power for, I think up to like four. I've seen, I've seen, really? I've seen Hammonds with four, you know, like how they'll have, they'll have them in the choir stand. Like, mm -hmm. the, yeah, they are, now if you think about it, yeah. Yeah, they're, those oh, are all cool being, those, those are all being powered off of the same organ. Got it. Yeah, so That's so it so it's this is this is light work. Gotcha. Um, but the reason I have two Leslies um, is because of this right here. This one element right here. Now, if you look on the horns, you'll see that there's this little piece in front mm -hmm. of the actual bell of the horn. You mm -hmm. See it? Yep. That's called a deflector. Okay. And what that, that does is that kind of deflects the immediate sound coming off the organ which enhances the doppler effect which yep. is why leslie's are so great mm -hmm. it enhances the doppler effect and kind of makes the sound more smooth and vocal because that's the whole purpose of the leslie speaker and the whole purpose of tremolo and growl right, right, right. is to emulate a voice right the vibrato from a voice so this kind of makes it sound more like a voice um but that's actually not my favorite sound. Okay. I just, but I do have it just in case I need it for production purposes. But if we look in here, this is the recording Leslie right here. So she's a full size 122. Now, if you look in and see that horn right there, the deflectors have been cut off of that horn. And what that does is that makes the that makes the tone coming off of the high end, the tweeter, yeah. a lot edgier and grittier because there's nothing to deflect it and smooth it out. That's crazy. So whenever you hear a uh, whenever you hear an organ that has like this really gritty flutter mm -hmm. that you can hear on a record, mm -hmm. normally that's because the deflectors are off. Mm -hmm. So and that's so for me that's like so that screaming church that's sound. Church. Yeah. So, so this is this is just like a basic setup. And then when you're ready to go to church, this is this is the civilized. This is civilized. This is the civilized organ, and I I, I name my organ Twinkie because I love ah. Twinkie. So this is civilized Twinkie, uh -huh. and this is church. This is Kojic yeah. convocation. Yeah, Twinkie, right here. Woo. My God, yes sir. Yeah, she sings. That's good, bro. So organ B three. Then you got uh, an eighty eight over here. I've got Rose the. I've got a Fender Rose. Yeah. With with the suitcase with the speakers, yeah, um, and I'm I'm gonna tell y'all something, man. I, Rose emulations are very good. Yeah, even even on the keyboards, like you know, between Nord and uh, the Yamahas, like they yeah. they got it pretty close. Yeah, and, and even to Keyscape, shouts out to Keyscape. Yeah, Scar Scarby, Scarby and, yeah, that's one of my uh, even gospel musicians with the Neo Soul. Yeah. Yeah, those those emulators are really good. But add when I, I'm telling you, as a, as an engineer, there's something about the real sound of this. Yeah. I think it's probably the inconsistencies of yeah. tuning and and just kind of the mechanical differences that exist in every mechanical yeah. keyboard instrument that make it just richer. Like when you hear it in the mix, it's like mm. 
Shout out the last person to play this was Antoine Walker. Shout out to uh, Antoine. Yeah, Antoine. We did a, we did a session. Me, it was me, him, um, Jubu, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and I forget. I, for, I don't know why the guy's name escapes me on bass. He used to play plays with Funk Apostles, Corey Henry, uh, from Chicago. Yeah, I never um, can call his name either. Hang on, I, I, don't don't charge it to my head. Not tomorrow. I can't. I just can't remember his name. Yeah, put it in the comments. Um, I'm sure they will, and they'll probably roast me for, for yeah. forgetting his name. But um, but he was the last person to play this, and I was like listening to his playback. It was like, man, this thing sounds good. It just makes it. Yeah. It it's it's something about it that really gives it that that authenticity. That if you if you if you going for like a neo soul vibe or like a jazz vibe, yeah, it's like. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's nothing like a real like, thing. Like electric drums versus uh, versus you know the real electric thing. anything. Yeah. Because you can you can you can you know you can find some good organ emulators, but yeah, I mean it's just nothing like it's nothing like it. The actual air spinning in it, it's just nothing more like it. Okay, okay, so you got that. You got the the whirlits are here. Yeah, whirly. You got a whirly. Uh, she she needs a little TLC. Um, Thing about Whirly is they all have the same issue. They all have uh, this power supply issue where mm -hmm. after a while, the, the whatever that houses the power supply, it gets like worn out or whatever over time, and it yeah. starts to. And it's in the same housing as whatever the audio yeah. is coming from. So the the hum from the power interferes with the audio and causes this. Um, so that's that's the thing with this right now. But she sounds really good. Um, and the drums, other, otherwise. In the drum cage right now, I have a, I've I built myself my own little drum room. Okay. Put a full drum enclosure in here, um, and that's primarily because sometimes we'll record things in the same room with the drums. Yeah. And I want to minimize bleed, um, and this does a really good job of that. No one your mic set up. In this in this uh in this room, uh I've got my Yamaha recording customs in here, um, mic choices. Uh, on the kick, I have the kick mic uh, with three, with, with three microphones. On the inside, I've got the Beta 91. Mm -hmm. On the outside, I've got the 52. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, for sub kick, I've got the Solomon. Yeah. Sub kick. Oh yeah. Sheesh, bro. God. Uh, I, I did a I did a shootout between that one and the famous DW yeah. one and the Yamaha sub kick, and this one really blew them all out of the water, man. Yeah. In terms of. I even I even got Derek Stevenson hooked on one of these. I, he used them for he used mine to track a session. And he was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna buy one right now." So that one sounds really great. Um, on my snare, on the bottom, I have a I have an EV. Let me see what this is. I always get the model of this wrong. It's an ND. ND767, the EV ND767. It's like a, it's like a beta on steroids. So it really does a great job of capture, capturing the, the sizzle of the snare up against the under, uh, the underside head. Um, and it's really smooth, but it, but it's still directional because I used to do it with a condenser, but sometimes that can be hard to control with the bleed of everything else going on on the top. Yeah. Um, I've got the bear dynamic on the top. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I go between that and a, and a 57, mm -hmm. um, depending on what the needs are. But I've been recording a lot of jazz lately, so the bear dynamic is is the one for that. Mm -hmm. On on the toms, I've got the SE mm -hmm. uh, tom mics on the drums, which they sound really fantastic. They they almost sound like there's a preamp mm -hmm. built yeah, into the, the microphone. Yeah, that's it's, yeah, they sound so good, especially for you know, high impact things like gospel music where you need you need those times to cut and um and you don't wanna have to like over process yeah. or replace the times. Exactly. Like this does a great job of capturing that. Uh on my floor toms, I've basically got two bass drum mics on mm -hmm. the floor toms. Uh one is the this is the Sennheiser six oh two on uh, on one of them. And that's primarily a kick drum uh, that they use for like jazz, yeah. jazz kick drums, like smaller ones that need more resonance. Uh, and it just works really great for floor times as well. Nice. And I've got this AKG uh, on the other, on the other, um, what is it, a D12? Is that what it is? 
on, on, on the other floor, Tom, and um, also does a great job with, with anything low end, but I particularly like it on the uh, on the floor toms. And I've got two, uh, I got two rolled large diaphragm condensers on my overheads. Um, and I've got, I just got this SE um, pencil condenser microphone for my hi hat. Mm -hmm. Um, from my big, my good friend Joe Riley swears by him, and we did a shootout with him uh, the other day, and I was like, I need this right yeah. now, so I bought it off of him on the spot. Nice, nice high end, nice crisp, but but not harsh or brittle. Yeah, uh, which is what you want for your hi hat. Like you don't want your hi hat to sound too brittle, you don't want it to sound harsh, mm -hmm. because that's the only frequency range it you know occupies in the mix is the high frequency range exactly and i like to mic the ride just in case i need it so i got a i got a road you know a road uh pencil condenser on the ride just in case i need it you know um and it's it's fun to be able to kind of mix that in as as needed um but i i, I rarely use it though yeah. it's just there to have just in yeah. case just in case yep all right then know uh, who your, your boards and stuff is yeah, this is just a couple of them right now. Um, these are the ones that, that kind of live in the studio because I don't like to carry them around. So I've got the Jupiter 80, uh, which if you know, you know, you know. Um, and then under that, I have the Montage 8. And this this particular keyboard, shouts out to Josh Riggins, um, is actually it's actually got Nord pianos on it. And it's got uh, MKS pianos on it. Oh wow! Yeah, so uh, and, and it, they're pretty legit, man. And I actually kind of prefer them, yeah, to the actual Nord piano because the Nord can sometimes have what they, you know, in their in their pursuit of kind of being as, you know, high fidelity in terms of pianos, they get all the pedal noise and yeah, the the the, uh, the string resonance and all that stuff, which is great. But sometimes you don't need all of that. Yeah. You just need the piano just, just to the pure, yeah, just to just to, to cut through. So. Yeah. Because um, that's not gonna cut through on the mix anyway. No, nah, generally not. Pedal stuff. Generally not. And it's something and it's gonna get in the way most times. So I so I kinda appreciate um the the fullness and the richness of the piano without all the extra stuff. So that's what kind of what I get with the pianos on here. So shout shouts out to you, Josh Riggins, for that. Uh helping me get this this keyboard situated. Um so that's that. Um, over here, I have my yeah. my baby, um, the baby baby grand. The, 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 well, it's not technically it's not a baby grand. It's a it's a full size grand. It's okay. it's a I think it's a six. It's right at six feet, maybe six yeah. one. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Made by Young Chain, um, the G one eighty five. Um, just sounds lovely, man. It sounds lovely. Real mellow because I do a lot of jazz here. Real smooth, real mellow, not too bright, uh, real even across the board. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the baby here. And when I when I do uh, jazz sessions here, uh, typically we have the entire band in the room. So it'll be mm -hmm. drums, the piano, uh, the bass will be over there, and maybe a horn player might be in one of those two rooms. Yeah. Um, but typically what I'll do is I have another full drum enclosure. And I'll put that up around this piano, and that provides me another isolation, love. another layer of, of isolation. That's good. So usually when I when I do that, the only bleed I might get is maybe the bleed from the bass drum. Yeah. If the drummer's like really laying into it, mm -hmm. the bass drum will maybe bleed through, and that can be filtered out. Yeah, it can be filtered out. Yeah, but for the most part, man, it's you know you throw a couple of C four fourteens or a couple of ribbon mics on this thing, and it's it's ready. It's it's heaven. Now, what about your outboard situation over there? You got some, you okay. got some goods. You got the goods. I got a little. I got a few goodies, man. Um, I run all my drums through the Focusrite ASA 828, yep. and uh, my my metallics I run through this Warm Audio 412. Yeah, kind of got the API sauce, mm -hmm. um, which is which I I enjoy for for okay. anything that's metallic and high pressure on the transient side. Um, and then I have, um, I got this baby right here, which I love to use on vocals, especially if it's something that's that's bright, like a female vocal, I love to use on this. 
Um, I'll use this on a guitar. Uh, I had a, I used to use it on bass, but now I have the the other the U5 for the bass, which is you know that, that's that's all you need. Mm -hmm. I'm running my now. This is this is this is kind of a hack, but uh -huh. I'm running my piano through this art. The Pro VA. Yeah, man, and it it really. I have that man. That's a that's a. It is people sleep on it because it's so cheap. Yeah. But man, like three hundred bucks. Yeah, but it really sounds good. It, it's it, specifically for the grand piano, and I even run my keyboard through it. Mm -hmm. I run the montage through it too, and it sounds. It it just it yeah, gives it another cool. layer of warmth and fatness. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 that vibe. So it's cheap. yeah. So I it's my little secret sauce because you know people sleep on it. Yeah. So then down here I've got the. The uh, WA, the Warm Audio 273, yeah. kind of a Neve clone type of situation. Sometimes I'll run my grand panel through this, yeah. Um, but this is typically a little bit brighter. So if I'm if I'm recording something where it's it's more of a pop thing, or if it's something that that doesn't require a lot of sensitivity, I'll run my grand piano through here. Yeah. Um, got a pair of LA 610s here. Uh, primarily for vocals, because I, I love the way they sound on vocals. Um, I like the way they sound on guitars, so sometimes I'll run guitars through there. Um, and that's for, or horns, because I do it. Like I said, I do record a lot of jazz. Yeah. These do sound awesome on horns. Nice. Um, but I'll also run my horns through here. I have four channels of Neve, yeah. the Porticos. Um, these actually sound great on horns. The other thing I really love about these is that they have a ton of game headroom. So if I'm running a ribbon mic, which typically need, you know, if either a cloud lifter or a preamp that has a lot of gain, this is one of those preamps. Um, Cause you can, and you can crank it up and you'll be like maybe right here and you got line level yeah. signal coming right. off of a ribbon mic and then you can, and you still have plenty of room, you know, yeah. um, to, to give it even more sauce if you need it. Um, and then down here, I've got um, the Golden Age. They're, they're kind of a, from what I understand, these are kind of their Neve clones, um, which when I first when I first got them, these might be, I wanna say these might be the first pair of outboard preamps I ever bought for myself. And um, I, I, I ran my grand piano through these uh, originally, um, but now I run the organ through here. Okay. And these, uh, when I when I just threw them on the organ one time, maybe a, a couple years ago, I was like, I just love yeah. how much color I'm getting, even from the organ, which already has its own beautiful color. Yeah. But running through here, it even it just took it up to a different level. Yeah. So I run my my organ top, my uh, my two organ tops through here. And then here I'm just running. Uh, this is just a cheap preamp I found in a uh, I found in a pawn shop, and it looked interesting. I did some it research. Like an instant sale. It does. That's what I thought it was at first, uh, and then I saw the name. I was like, "Symmetrics." Okay, and so I did some in, I did some research on it, and this this is kind of a pre that they used to use in in radio, um, in radio stations uh, back in the day, um, and it has a vibe. It does sound like the '80s, so I don't I don't typically use it on much of anything. But I got my organ bottom coming through here, okay, just for giggles, but just for giggles, just for giggles. and and but it works, it works, it sounds good. So I I just let it live there, um, and then this, the Tone Beast I use for guitar. I only use it on guitar, um, but uh, yeah, that's 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 the outboard, the beginning of the outboard yeah. situation. And then you got the uh, minus joint for the uh, yeah for your, for your console. Yes, so my console where everything is kind of running into is the Midas. Uh, I absolutely love this desk. Um, a lot of the a lot of the, the records that I've produced, uh, especially the live ones, have been tracked using this desk. Um, this has the real Midas pre's in there, which are fat, warm, and punchy. So I love the way this sounds uh, with drums, bass. I just love the way it sounds. So I was like, man, I got to get one for the studio just to have that extra 
you know, that extra color going into um, going into Pro Tools. So it sounds really good. It also works great for live. Um, the hearback system on these things is oh, yeah. incredible. If, if anybody's ever used their hearback module, it's just like, you know, I'm waiting on God. <laughs> waiting on God to bless me with some more with some more money so I can get about five of them for the studio. Because yesterday's price will not be today's yeah, price. Yeah. Um, yeah. Monitors, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Dell, so I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't have a forty thousand dollar monitor budget. But um, uh, I got the best monitors I could, I could afford to, to kind of get the sound I needed, which is why I really love the Yamaha HS8s. Yeah, they're very transparent yeah. and and um, very accurate with acoustic stuff, and I do a lot of acoustic stuff. Whether it be in gospel or jazz or R and B, I do a lot of acoustic stuff, a lot of vocal stuff. So those are very transparent uh, for me, and I like to I like to mix on these. I also love these Adam. Uh, the T7. These are the C set, the T the T seven T four, or they T5, might be the five. TBB TB five. Yes. Yeah, I have the sevens. I love them. I love them. They're all. The, I I don't typically mix on them a lot. Only because they sound so good until they they almost sound too good oh, yeah. for me. But when I'm producing, when I'm doing music production, or if I'm doing, you know, all the tracking and stuff like that, I love to use them because it just helps me. It keeps me excited yeah. and, and engaged. Yeah. So uh, and sometimes I'll do it just just for referencing because they're more of a near field yeah. situation. So sometimes I use them just to A B what I'm doing. Um, I used to have. Uh, some of the NS10s in here, I used to have them, yeah. um, but I I got rid of them because they just they didn't serve me. Yeah. Uh, but I but I but I had them in here because they're so flat and so like they sound so ugly mm -hmm. until you know like, just like they say, you make a mix sound good on those, yeah. you're pretty much good everywhere else. Yeah, good. Yeah. But um, I I just found just turned out not to really need them. Here's here's where all of my monitors are being routed to, um, the Behringer Control, which is kind of their Take on the big knob. Yeah. Um, pause. But they don't make them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, they don't make that one no more, right? They, I don't they think discontinued, so. they discontinued. I, I went, I went to look for it, and I, I couldn't well, find them. technically, on a low key, I think Behringer just discontinued on everything. Gosh, they, they, they just cut out. Um, they're not really even selling in stores, physical stores anymore. It's all oh, online. Man. I think they're only going through Sweetwater now. Gosh, which is, which is crazy. But um. I managed to get one of these before the pandemic mm -hmm. and everything went crazy. Yeah. Um, I like it, man. It's, it's, I mean, you don't get a whole lot of, of, uh, artifacts or, or electronic noise, not a lot of hits until you turn it like all the way up and you might get yeah. a little something, but, and they got enormous amounts of headroom. I can, I can hook, you know, three different monitor mm -hmm. sources up to it. Um, I got four audio sources I can hook up to it, including USB, which is the computer, yeah. or I can take from different other sources just in case I need it. That's perfect. Got two headphone outputs to it. So if I'm doing it just me and a vocal, we can both sit in on the same session and, and I don't have to hook up a headphone amp or you know whatever. Um, all right, so yeah, I just got this, I just got this uh, sub not too long ago, um, the KRK. Uh, I've always wanted one yeah. and um, I finally, from one, because I, I, I do a lot of shopping on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and OfferUp, eBay. Listen, y'all, you know, Sweetwater is great. Um, all of the retailers are great. But man, if you stay on those sites, you know, it, more often than not, you come across some great stuff at a great oh, price. So, big, big definitely. You got the uh, fade report. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so before I got my uh, M32, <clears throat> the space on this desk was taken up by a QCon Pro yeah. control surface, mm -hmm. uh, which I really loved it. Um, it's so accurate. And um, something about mixing where you can actually put your hands exactly. on the faders that makes it, it feel real. Yeah, and it, it, it kind of increases your creativity mixing-wise, yeah. um, especially when it comes to automation and push-pull. So mm -hmm. um, when I got this... Uh, there was no way I could contain both desks on the same space. So I was kind of thinking of what I was going to do 
Um, I thought about getting a Raven. Mm. Um, I was like, nah, they're not the most. They're not the most accurate for me. No, they're, I'll be honest. I, I've owned one for two years. Yeah, they're station. not the most. They're not the most accurate to me. So not I was for, not for automation. Right. Every, and, the, the the cool part. It's the cool factor on all, everything. Else. Right. But exactly. It sucks for automation. I'll be honest. That's 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 what I that's what I've experienced. But um, I I went ahead and, and fell on the fader port uh, because from what I was in my research, I figured I you know heard that they were more reliable. Yeah. Especially between the two dolls. Exactly. Um, because the, I was looking at the Behringer one beforehand, and the Behringer one had a lot of problems with Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. Worked perfectly in Logic and and Cubase and other other. Yeah. other but when it came to Pro Tools, it was just like, yeah, there was a lot of problems. So I do all of my mixing virtually in Pro Tools. So yeah. I needed something that was going to work well with Pro Tools. And this one turned out to work the best with yeah. Pro Tools. Um, all the functionality of the buttons and everything mm -hmm. uh, is translated. was translated over really well. So that's why I felt it. And the biggest reason is because of its footprint. Super small. Mm -hmm. I've got 16 faders. And I can, you know, I got the bank option where I can go yep. in between and I can control all of my faders. Um, so that was that was the biggest thing because I couldn't house it here. Yep. I didn't want to put it anywhere else yep. because that would just make it too cumbersome and, and logistically it, it would just be stupid. Maybe. So this one fits right on my, you know, my little keyboard tray and I and I still got room for my mouse. So it, it, it works for me. I like it. It's good. I like it. Thanks, guys, for coming in and checking out this uh, studio tour. Uh, I got plenty of more that's going to be coming down. I also got a video uh, from Larry breaking.